streaming. All right, and we're live. All right, guys, gotta let me know if the sound is good. If the sound is not good, you let me know. And if the video is not good as well. All right. Okay. Now we'll just wait for people to get on board right now since I just went live. Hopefully this works. Okay, so in the meantime, I'll share with you what's been happening. So as you know, if you've been following me, I make health and fitness videos all the time that require, you know, no equipment or minimal equipment. And so now that everyone's quarantined and looking into this stuff, it's like I have a bunch of stuff on my website that is useful for everyone. So I made this page. It says get strong and flexible at home. It's, uh, it's at ontronic.org slash home dash workout. And there's a comprehensive list. I mean, there's full routines, there's follow along yoga videos, and then there's like, follow, you know, follow along body weight fitness videos. There's tutorials galore on flexibility, strength training, and so forth. So awesome. Okay, we got some people in and I'm you know ready to answer any questions talk about anything just anything goes kind of i know we're all kind of stuck inside so you know uh, i'm i want to be a little proactive and help everyone at the same time because it's you know it's difficult for me to make content at the moment but i can at least do some other things so and this live stream is one of them all right so i await you guys to talk about anything at this point <laughs> oh and at the same time if you're looking to increase your flexibility if you go to my website and then go to the top my training programs you'll see there's an ultimate flexibility bundle that's basically like one bundle that includes three of my flexibility programs, which has the easy hamstrings flexibility program, the hip flexibility program, and the shoulder and upper back flexibility program. And you could get all three of those all together in this bundle. And this requires zero equipment. All of these things require zero equipment. So it's just ideal if you're looking to increase your flexibility at home especially so first question first of all how are you <laughs> thanks for asking drunk rooster um, hope you're doing great thank you second question is about diet what do you eat typically what's the food you eat the most oh well that's that's interesting that's a tough question i so let's let's what do i eat typically like i have a very wide range of things i eat i suppose i tend to stay lower carb not zero carb not the ketogenic diet these days however when i'm looking to make a conscious choice in my you know food selection i will opt for something that's lower in carbs in general so like i'll still eat some bread i'll still eat some rice and i'll still eat some pasta but not as much as a normal person would and everything else goes you know i will opt for vegetables i treat fruits um, so for fruits i will basically focus on berries like strawberries and blueberries are my favorites all other fruits, I kind of treat them as candy. I don't eat them as much. And because sugar is so easy to eat in our life, like it's the easiest resource we have, it's the cheapest macronutrient. So I try to avoid um, overloading myself with sugar and everything else like eggs and 
you know, maybe some some meat. I'm not like huge on ground beef. Yeah, I, I prefer turkey over ground beef, for example. And oh, but uh, in terms of uh, vegetarian choices, the Beyond meat, uh, the Beyond burgers and Italian sausage hot dogs are really good like amazing like that would turn me to a vegan <laughs> all right and i don't know what is the food i eat the most so um that's uh, i would have to look at my log currently i don't have any strict diet other than counting my calories which i made a video on recently which i should share with you if you go to my home page and go to um, if you scroll down and then there's this video called guaranteed weight loss i'm not gonna play it you don't i don't want to play it now but basically how to lose weight without exercising or diet, dieting i will just share this in the chat and it basically the reason i'm saying this is because i i've been counting my calories recently for, so about three weeks right now and when I'm counting my calories for the purpose of losing weight, I allow myself to kind of eat anything, uh, not anything, but I'm a lot more lax with my diet because I know that I just, my goal is to just stay under a certain number of calories. Okay, so that's my current state right now. And I've lost six pounds in three weeks and uh, I'm really happy about that. Like, it's so easy. Like, honestly, it's just math, you know, like it's math. You stay under a certain amount of calories, you're going to lose weight, okay? Like, it's just, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next questions. Uh, sorry if that took a little bit. Um, Michael uh, or Michelle says, I have a lot of, I have all your programs and love them. Thank you for that. I have a question. If the smart core program can be combined with the hypertrophy program, yeah, the smart core program is very flexible uh, because it's only like you're only going to be doing like 10 minutes of exercise per session when you're working on your core, you don't need to like hammer it for like an hour. It's something that you can incorporate with all other programs in general. So absolutely the hypertrophy program if you're using rings with it you're already working your core a significant amount when you're using rings for like most like like most things like even just push-ups you're using your core like crazy and just the support hold and dips like it's awesome but if you want more emphasis on your core and you want to make sure it grows yeah absolutely you could combine the two and how to do it to just do it on the days that you're not working uh, not the days that you're not working out on the hypertrophy workout uh, uh, just do the ab or core workout on the other days or after your hypertrophy work that's the simplest way i would um, program it so so let's see what other questions daniel says um, so we know a lot about the body weight strength training that you've published but what kind of cardio do you recommend at home so honestly i don't know what to recommend there i personally always do outdoor things when i'm <laughs> doing cardio you know usually i ride my bike or i'll go swimming or go for a jog or play frisbee or something like something dynamic like that but indoors i don't like getting sweaty indoors i don't know so i really don't know what to suggest if i'm just going to be brutally honest like you could do jumping jacks right you could do the insanity workout and like you know get really sweaty doing a bunch of random movements sure um however you know it's not my forte all right cardio at home hmm. yeah I, i'm not sure i don't work out that way so it's like it's just not a not a thing i've thought about like getting a you know if it, if i was in an environment where it snows and i can't like ride my bike i would get one of those bicycle trainers where people ride attach the bike to and then they could just ride their bike inside 
inside their home. That would be cool. But uh, then again, I, it's because I love bicycling. So, um, next question. Uh, Matej, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh, we have a lot of questions. Um, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I can't reply. Um, can't reply to everyone right now. But moving on, Matej asks. Hey, uh, Antranik, I love your guides and your calming demeanor. My question is how or what do I substitute skin the cat and German hang exercises since I don't have rings? Also, the overhand grip is too hard. Okay, so um, it's really difficult to actually make a suggestion for how to train that in a safe manner without the rings. If you have a pull-up bar, I would recommend that you, like the, the bar would have to be low around chest height so that if you're going through the skin the cat position toward German hang and you're actually not ready to handle the load, that your feet would touch the ground before your shoulders. So if you don't have a bar that's chest height, uh, around chest height then I would I would not work on skin the cat and German hang in terms of a general recommendation I don't know who you are what your capabilities are but that's my first guess uh, first you know answer and I would say get the rings like you you know get rings they're not sold out <laughs> rings are not sold out pull-up bars are sold out a lot of fitness things are sold out, but uh, rings are not sold out. Get wooden rings, by the way, any wooden rings. Hang them from somewhere and have a blast. All right. Uh, June's asking, uh, I'm a girl and was wondering what you would suggest a beginner with no experience in exercising to take up. I find everything tiring. Um, all right, well, that's a good question. Uh, like, if you go to my website and go to the home page and scroll down to work out the latest blog post. Is, oh, sorry, I'll just show you right here. Yeah, so if you go to my website and then just scroll down to, you know, work out at home. It's the latest blog post. <clears throat> scroll down and there's like some comprehensive routines and you know they take a look at them and see if you know if they're not too complicated to you i would say or if they do seem a little too complicated move down and try to follow along bodyweight fitness videos okay starting with the warm-ups and the core body line drills so the so the body line drills i would say and yeah uh, start there and then like explore the other things there and 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 just just like start piecing together what you see is your weakness what see you see is your strength and then maybe you can move on to one of the more comprehensive routines once you're starting to dip your toes in and yeah um, that's my question for right now and I mean my answer uh, Steve says, how about some chicken or beef liver? I personally love liver. <laughs> I know it's not like most people's favorite food at all. Um, but I like liver. I eat liver sometimes. And it's cheap. Like it's surprising because it's so packed with nutrients. And it's like the cheapest organ. Uh, organs in general are really cheap. So, And they're very nutritious. So, um, All right, next question. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Electric Eel says, I remember finding you on Reddit years ago and can honestly, honestly say you've made a huge impact on my life. Thank you and keep doing you. Thank you. Thanks, Electric Eel. <laughs> um, all right, so Vinay Mehta says, asks, uh, can you please share your best suggestions to increase the basic pull-up and push-up endurance basically how to increase reps at pull-ups and push-ups oh i got like the best thing for you um i got the best things for you but Vinay, here if you go to that link i mean to the home workout page 
go to the minimalistic body weight um, routine. I'll just post a link to this in the description right now. I mean, in the not description. I'm so used to saying, oh, find the link in the YouTube description. No, but I'll post it in the chat right now. It's basically ontronic.org slash minimal. And then, wow, it's loading really slow. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's the website you want to go to. Uh, ontronic.org slash minimal. I don't know why it's not loading. But it will get your pull-ups and push-up count up really fast. Spe because it's specifically only those. Okay? I don't know why my website's loading really slow. It could be the internet. The internet is shit nowadays, guys. Everyone's on the internet and like the whole world, the, not just your city and neighborhood, but like everywhere. All the servers around the world are you know, Netflix, Hulu, all these things are overloaded. It's pretty crazy. Pretty interesting times we live in. Hey. <laughs> so. All right, I'm going to move down here. Uh, to, 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 to move on. Uh, could I talk about the Floreo page? Uh, what would you like me to talk about? Sorry. I mean, you got to be a little more specific with your questions, but if I just search Floreo, the Floreo project, this is basically a, you know, a culmination, a whole compendium of all of Ido Portal's work that he had for free on his website and, you know, mobility stuff, you know, everything is like organized. I have a lot of these like comprehensive blog posts like this, and this is just one of them and you know just take whatever you like from there and incorporate it into your own life you don't need to like treat this as like a routine or you're gonna have to do everything one after the other you just kind of like try what and see what your weaknesses are what you want to improve on what you think is cool and uh, you know pick and choose what how you want to condition yourself so you know that's how i would treat this page as um but yeah this uh, i'm surprised that page is still not loading but anyway all right let's go back to the questions all right i'm looking to A angel says i'm looking to build or buy my first area in the house for house workouts okay i think the only big thing is the bars for pull-ups and put the rings um, yeah, honestly, that's all you need. Like if you have, so have a bar, a high, a higher the bar, the better so that your feet can hang without touching the, without touching the floor, ideally, or even way higher than that so that, you know, you can hang a pair of rings from the bar and then you could do anything like you could do pulling work, pushing work, um, and so in general that's going to take care of anything that's especially for the upper body that's what i'm talking about so upper body a pair of rings and a pull-up bar you're set you're set for life <laughs> so if you have like a pair of dumbbells uh, that would help take care of the legs you know so doing things like split squats bulgarian split squats with like uh, you know 40, 50, 60 pounds of weight, and you're you're good there too. All right. Uh, we have another question. This one's a little more philosophical. Or how do you get out of a negative mindset? A self-fulfilling prophecy. I have been stuck in a rut of bad habits and inability to keep up a good gym routine or work routine. Um, this is a tough question. This is like this is one of those things if um how do you get out of a negative mindset it really depends if you're like depressed i did have a video on how to get through um, dealing with anxiety and depression i'll just i'll just post this in the chat how to get through depression it's part four of my mindful motivation series oh this is an ad uh, it's because I don't have you block on. I'm going to post this in there. And boom, 
All right, so take a look at that. There's a lot of tips in this video of how to get through depression because, and that will probably help you to regain your momentum, okay? And I'm not saying you're depressed, but just like, that's just one way, you know? And there, there's a lot of ways to like, start doing something and just keep at it like you can just literally just keep a log like i have like a log like on my notes of just like the date and then what workout i did and then after a while this is like you know 200 lines of workouts and all i need to do is just look back look at this list and see when was the last time i worked out oh it's been four days i gotta do it you know, that's like something simple I do, for example. Um, all right. Uh, Renan, oh, he also says I should read all these things ahead of time. <laughs> You'll have one good day and then completely crash the next day. Um, yeah, just don't go too hard on that first day. Try to like, you know, you've heard the phrase like you're running a marathon not a sprint you know don't like go 100 percent zero to 100 on something just like take your time like think of the long run i don't know how else to say it without knowing you but yeah and yeah tristan i'm taking questions from everyone <laughs> johan says i'm bald like you but it hits my confidence with the girls any tips honestly don't give a shit like your looks your baldness no one gives two shits that you're bald okay like it's all about your confidence confidence is what will trump anything else okay like seriously like you you think you think the girl really cares that like you have a bald spot like or you're like you're losing some hair no no, they don't give a shit. All they care is that, you know, you have your shit together. You guys are vibing together. You guys have, like, a connection. And, you know, everything else will, like, play out. Just, like, you know, just do not care about the hair, the hair stuff. I know, like, because I went through that. But, you know, you quickly, really, you quickly realize... People don't care about that stuff, okay? If they're not going to like you because you're bald, then they don't deserve you, the rest of you, okay? That's all. All right. So, Kevin Kevin says, uh, my question is about the front lever. How would someone work up to the front lever, assuming they can already do about 10 pull-ups? Okay. Hmm. Depends. Do you have a tuck front lever? If you don't have a tuck front lever, you should work on the tuck front lever. Um, do I have anything on the front lever? What happens if I type my name and the front lever? Yeah, so I have the this video titled The Best Front Lever Tips, Drills, and Beyond. So, you know, I'll just post a link to this and this is more like if you already have the tuck front lever um, but if you don't have the tuck front lever work on the inverted hang tuck and then lower down slowly through the tuck front lever as slowly as possible until you're in a dead hang okay until eventually you could hold the tuck front lever and then after that you can you know go you know watch this video and then learn a little bit more the front lever is pretty pretty insane yeah you have to be a little more detailed about what to do straight arm strength requires straight arm training so if you're doing 10 pull-ups that's great but like the bent arm strength doesn't necessarily mean that you have the power to hold the front lever with straight arms or uh, even a tucked front lever okay so uh, moving on to the next question. All right. Ansar says, thanks for the live stream. You're welcome. What's the, it's kind of weird that there's two of me. Like there's like, I'm right here and then I'm right here. 
So what page? How about just me? Okay, yeah. All right, Ansar says, uh, what's the best alternative for dips and what are the prerequisites for doing dips? Oh, so basically, and you could only do about three or four. Um, if you could do about three or four reps of something, that's generally good enough to like keep doing it and be able to do more of it. Okay, so like, you know, if you, if you could only do like one, like eh, you might need to build up the foundation with a regression but like if you're doing three or four that's good just do like two rest do another two and then rest a few minutes and then do another two so like you're doing like six or eight broken up into purposely you're not going to failure each time you're just doing a little bit and that's how you'll build the volume meaning like you know more reps and then eventually you'll be able to do like three reps per set and then the next thing you know you're doing a bunch so um alternative though alternative to the alternatives for dips because maybe you don't have dips is if you type pike push-ups in you know in my name in google you're gonna this is a great alternative to this is a great alternative to dips okay so pike push-ups are basically it's an overhead pressing motion that also works your triceps and chest just like a dip however um it's harder so you know and, and this this it's not just harder but it's more complex so this is like bad form for example and now this is good form see my head is going forward and down it's it's way harder to do the good form version so a lot of this is the bad form like elbows flaring out head going straight down and then this is like the the, the right way okay and so doing it the right way is pretty difficult and it's a complex move that's why i made this blog post that explains it but it's a great alternative for dips and just it, it's a great alternative to push-ups as well because push-ups are once they're easy they're kind of useless and you want to find a harder variation of a push-up um and yeah so that's that's what i gotta say about that and um yeah it sucks I can't catch up to the scroll. It's okay. I'll go one on one. Zain asks, where are you from? I'm Armenian. I was born in Los Angeles. So Armenia is east of Turkey. And that's the little landlocked country. And I grew up speaking Armenian in the house. I could read and write Armenian. And so I think that's why I have a little bit of an accent, <laughs> even though I was born in Los Angeles. So JK says, uh, hey, Antronic, have you got any tips for dealing with knots in my upper back or mid back? I tried using a foam roller, but it hasn't solved the issue. Okay, so if you just search lacrosse ball, lacrosse ball and my name on Tranik, you're gonna find this video titled how to use a lacrosse ball for self-massage with me okay so after this ad i will you'll you're by you're basically gonna see a video of how i use it let's go to the one on the mid back boom 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 ah here right here boom so right there you put the ball you see the ball right there is against the wall and literally just like rub yourself against against the wall okay like with the ball like roll just up and down and it feels really good that's like that's like the way to do it if the form roller is not working really well so you know and of course you could do it on other things like triceps and <laughs> chest um, and the, my favorite though is my glutes like there's a ball under there uh, under under my glutes 
like right there is the ball and you're just rolling your ass over in the ball this is wonderful <laughs> okay so i'm gonna let's see what else what else do i have here you can also do you can also do the the ball against the floor but i find it like really easy to control against the ball for your back okay um okay next so how do you start with stretching for general flexibility i need to start stretching and some calisthenics but am lost as to where to begin okay cyrus um that's a good question if we go to that home page and you know go to home workouts let's say go to i would say just like do one of my follow along yoga videos okay like yoga takes care of the body in multitude of ways it stretches your body in you know many different directions so going through like a yoga video like i have a bunch and like one of these links is like a playlist to 20 videos so you know so i would say start with like the first one the first one is like the classic and really good so if i don't say so myself but really people have told me so much about how it helps them and it's like manageable for beginners and it's even fun for intermediates so it's pretty cool uh, so i hope that helps you cyrus uh, <laughs> angel says no one cares about baldness indeed that's right just own it that's right keep it short and it looks lit yeah that's what i do <laughs> um all right jubilant says um Oh, wait, I lost. Uh, thanks so much for all your videos and sharing your vast knowledge for absolutely nothing. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Tristan has a question. I'm curious if you have any advice on getting out of a rut during this chaotic situation. I've had a terrible semester with school and now this whole thing is quite anxiety inducing. Yeah, that's like, you know what? You guys should like, I'm going to type mindful motivation and my name so there's this um so i have like this video how to reduce anxiety and stop a panic attack and then how to reduce stress and anxiety about the future so i think that one and these videos are only like one or two minutes long you should totally see them and then how to deal with unforeseen circumstances and problem is the third one so like I would say like, you know, go go through like each of these. It'll only take you a few minutes. And these are these tips inside are what really help me, you know, just like to help understand that okay, in this present moment, right now, there's actually nothing wrong with me. Do I have food? Do I have some water? Like if do I, am I under a roof? If these basic things are are met right now uh then actually everything is actually okay in this exact moment and this moment is the only moment that is relevant right now right so these this kind of concept helps me whenever i feel you know anxiety because of the future or depression because of the past and these help me to like center myself and there's also a cool way to meditate that's like really really simple oh i'm gonna like post this mindful motivation series to in the chat right here sorry for the sorry for the keyboard it's so loud it pisses pisses off my girlfriend <laughs> so next where was i okay uh, do I do good old-fashioned cardio? Yes, I do good old-fashioned cardio. I do it outdoors, usually on a bike ride. I've been doing more jogging lately. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm not, it's, not my, it's not my favorite, but yeah. Um, I was wondering whether you made a conscious decision not to care much about aesthetics. Was there ever a point where you did? Um that's a good question uh 
sure I, th I think when I was like a teenager I was like more into it like when I first started working out I went to a gym and I was I was like I had like a bodybuilding mindset I didn't want to be a bodybuilder but like I was working out to you know make my biceps big and make my shoulders big but like I wasn't working out to achieve a certain movement and then that movement is that capability becomes a reflection of my you know my aesthetics becomes a reflection of my capabilities that's how I see it now so yeah that's um I don't really care too much aesthetics I'd rather just like be a capable person be strong and be able to do a bunch of shit and then my body just looks good because I am doing that you know I find that fun so yeah uh, Gustavo says hey nothing to ask right now but just wanted to thank you for your great videos and you're welcome uh, Gulev uh, Guli says pike push-ups with perfect form are tough uh, I can almost overhead press my body weight and these destroy me. Absolutely. Absolutely. The um, pike push-ups are really hard. And that's why they're great. I love things that are difficult. Okay. If they're easy, it's kind of like pointless. Okay. You could do a hundred of them. Who cares? Right. <laughs> so um, what else? Mm -mm 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 -mm. So Renant has an example. He wakes up early every day and the resistance to getting out of bed is the same with every disciplined activity in life. I simply do not want to start my scheduled exercises and studies. I mean, you have to hit this head on, man. Like you have to hit this head on. You're subconsciously sabotaging yourself. Um, you know, like you're... you're you have like big dreams inside you i know you have like big aspirations and you're just like purposely like shooting yourself in the foot because you know that if you like achieve those things you're gonna like be this amazing person that you actually are so like really stop sabotaging yourself and just go for it like forget it just tell yourself like i'm gonna do one creative thing Okay, don't like say I have to, I'm going to do like a hundred things today and overwhelm yourself and do nothing. Just like start small and say, okay, I'm going to do this one thing. All right. And it doesn't have to be one thing, but like what helps me is to just make a to-do list in the morning or in the evening before you go to sleep, like make a little to-do list of things you got to do and then reorder or like prioritize that list. Like, okay, number one is this, number two is that. Try to do the things that you have the most resistance to doing. Do that first. If you do that first, everything else is a breeze. <clears throat> so those are like, you know, some of my tips to help you get out of bed and just be a little more disciplined. You have to force the discipline, by the way. If you just wait for the motivation to come, the motivation is very fleeing. It's inconsistent. You know, you have to just like sometimes force, force it, like just do it, like you got to do it. All right. So how do you say my name is Antranik in Armenian? Imanuna Santranike is one way to say it. So Imanuna Santranike. Um, what is your source or sources of income or do you have a job on the site? Any other interests besides fitness? Uh, so right now, I mean, for the past couple of years this has been my way of living my I've been trying to make this sustainable and I do that by selling um, I have so much free content but I I have like I have like so much free content but I have like these premium programs like there's the free stuff down here but like I have the you know my rings routine and then flexibility routines that you have to pay for so like this income on the side from you know the premium programs are what help keep me afloat and your support always means a lot to me so thanks a bunch and let's see um ne next question um is two reps for three to four sets enough volume 
it could be it could be so like just stay consistent with it like just stay just stay solid with it you know like and you're going to be able to add a rep here and there here and there and next thing you know you're doing a bunch so yeah just stay consistent you know keep a log if you want to be like really methodical i like being methodical so like keeping a log is awesome i like doing that and just like simple pen and paper just like you don't have to like use a phone for everything like i like a pen and paper because there's no notification pop-ups on pen and paper right like you're not gonna be distracted you know, i just want to write down how many reps sets and reps of something i did and then just when i look back at it then that's all i see you know it's very clear cut all right so um all right here we go Eunice says hi Antronic can you tell me if lunges or squats help with glute fat so in general in general spot reduction is bullshit okay like you cannot okay so think of it this way you have your muscle and then you have fat over the muscle okay when you grow your muscle you don't get rid of the fat on top okay the fat just like stays there and if you grow your muscle like everything just grows together so you cannot spot reduce meaning like you can't just say i want to lose like you know fat on my ass you know like the body takes care of that and the body does that through dieting like if you want to basically lose fat what generally tends to happen is you need to eat less calories than you need and then after a few weeks you'll start to notice that like you lose face uh, you lose fat first from your face and then like your chest and arms and you know shoulders will have more definition and then the gut will start being slimmer and then like usually the glutes and thighs are the last ones so like it goes like face shoulders gut and then the lower body in general so it's usually like the most stubborn fat is on the lower body and you know working out your glutes will help you know will help make them will help make the muscles more developed and look good and have a nicer shape to it but it's not going to get rid of the fat over it and that's more nutrition okay so and i have a i have a couple of videos on this recently i think if i go to my thing the truth on weight loss how weight loss works this video this video i'm going to post a link to this how weight loss works now this doesn't cover the weight loss aspect but it's you know it's a good video to watch just so i mean it doesn't cover the spot reduction aspect but it covers other things that you should probably check out okay now what would be your go-to tips for fixing anterior pelvic tilt i've been doing the hip flexor stretch recommended along with some planks and some glute bridges would that be enough i would also add this shoulder and your name is vonzo vonzo is that a real name that's a cool name um shoulder lat stretch there we go this one awesome shoulder and lat lat stretch i'm gonna post this link this is a really good stretch i'll just show you what it's like so you want to put your knees further back and then you want to do like a cat cow position so here's the money right here as you go down this part stretches your it stretches out your lats and uh, you know your armpit area like all it is which is nice because if you're working on your anterior pelvic tilt if you have like um forward rounded shoulders um it's gonna be working against your anterior pelvic tilt so stretching them out this way is really good 
Let me see, how do I tag? There we go. So that's for Bonzo right there. Okay, so like, I'm sure there's other recommendations. You know, you're already doing glute bridges, you're stretching your hip flexors, um, but and you're doing some core work with the planks, which is awesome. Um, first thing that comes to mind is like add this kind of a stretch as well. And if you do any like yoga once a week, once a month, as much as you can, it helps as well, just to work well-roundedness, okay? Uh, so let's go back to here. All right. What advice would you give a beginner wanting to get into movement or the movement culture becoming a generalist? So in the beginning, it just depends. Do you have like a good foundation of strength? If you do, or if you don't, you really should start getting stronger because if there's any skills that you want to learn, if there's any skills you want to learn, you want to make sure that you have strength because if you don't have the strength, then some skills are impossible. But if you have basic amount of strength, then a lot of skills are easy and just require repetition. So I showed before the Floreo project. I'll show you again. If you just type Floreo project, here's a really good compendium of like a bunch of interesting ways to move. Like if you go to like the you know Floreo movements, you're gonna see a bunch of different like interesting ways to move. Um, you might find something interesting there. I would recommend hand balancing. So like. Uh, Let's see if I can tag you. This is one. And then the comprehensive handstand tutorial is the other. So like these two, I just posted the links in the chat room. Like if you don't have a handstand and you want to get into movement culture, like handstanding is awesome. Like it feels so good and feels so rewarding. And this, uh, you know, this tutorial is really comprehensive. I have like everything laid out. So uh, I would I would recommend I would recommend the handstands and the Floreo project just to like dip your feet into like, you know, work on like what things you like. Do you like cartwheels? Do you like bridges? Like there's all sorts of ways to go. So here we go. Um, where and how did you start promoting and marketing yourself? Let's be real. If no one knew you exist, existed, it doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are. No one can buy your content. I first started um, just being on Reddit. So like if you go to the R Bodyweight Fitness subreddit and let's see, this is the page. Why? Here we go. So uh, I was really active on Reddit, and actually that's me right here. You see this uh, top? That's that's me right there in this flag position. So I'm in the banner. I'm in the banner. So like th this is like a really good place for any body weight fitness questions and answers in general and i was really active here i'm still very active there so i get ex i got exposed on there when i made some like follow along videos for them and they really liked it and supported me and so i just kept doing it and so a lot of people you know found me from from reddit so that helped a bunch to help you know other people know me and whatever so yeah oh and you already say i mostly saw your videos on reddit that's cool <laughs> cool there we go boom um, all right so now it's just a bunch of my links okay Cyrus says, do you have a stretch you like for psoas release? Like, honestly, I just love my um, hip flexor stretch with the low lunge. Part two, hip flexor, oh, it's right here. 
So how to stretch your hip flexors in a lunge, part two. So it's basically this. Oh, I'm not showing my screen right here. Boom. So how to stretch your hip flexors. I'll just push, push this in the, in the chat room. And so this stretch right here is the money. <laughs> okay. So like that's a really good stretch in general because it's going to get your psoas and you know, it's a really good one. So another good one is the couch stretch. I don't know if it's called the couch stretch. I'm going to type couch stretch on Tronic. And this is on Lachlan Walker's channel. But basically, it's got my dog in there. And it's just this stretch against the wall right there. See it? I'll just move, move myself. See that stretch right here? So that stretch is really good. Okay, and I put a link to this. I'll put a link to this video in the. I'll put a link to this video in the chat right now. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and we're getting close to an hour. So if you have any questions or whatever else to ask, please let me know. What else? Oh, I just like seeing my dog digging the sand right now. This is. I should just leave this on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so sorry i got distracted by my dog all right all right um panda says i have a constant shoulder back pain with cracking and popping in my shoulders i've had it for two years and i believe from weighted dips i, I took a year off and it's still there okay so this is this is really like it sounds complex it could be very complex and you know i would say see a physiotherapist this is not something i can really suggest if you have constant shoulder pain i mean it could be impingement it could be a labrum tear i don't know what's going on and then back pain i don't know like was it upper back pain lower back pain i mean like this it's off limits sorry i can't answer that question and but just try to find a sports oriented physiotherapist i know it's hard i know it's really hard to find good help like this is a constant struggle it's hard to find good people that are good at anything like really good but once you find them it's worth it it was worth the struggle all right so i should i should move this yeah <laughs> here we go okay so uh let's see what else we got here what other questions oh panda is also saying i worked out to get back in shape with the injury and now i've hurt my chest from dips yeah like if the dips keep hurting you forget it man like like if you know that it's the dips every time like for me personally like that happened with like the back lever like i was working the back lever and then my elbow started hurting and i stopped working it stop the elbow stopped hurting and then i went back to it and it started hurting again and i'm like you know what like back lever is not worth it like it's the only exercise that hurts me and like i don't really care that much about it so like yeah like cut it out do something else. Do pike push-ups. Do pike push-ups that lead you to handstand push-ups. It's going to... Or do like overhead press. If you have access to weights since you're doing uh, weighted dips, do an overhead press and you're going to have like insane pressing strength. Like sure, you're not dipping for, down, but honestly, overhead press is probably more useful, you know? so that that's all i gotta say yeah um okay uh mr thibo says i saw your video about the rings false grip and i really want to get get it but how would you suggest training for it 
like 10 minutes once a day or 30 seconds after okay so um, so in regards to grip training i like to do grip like if you already work out you have like a workout pro workout plan i would say do the false grip training at the end of your workout like the last thing you do so it doesn't interfere with the grip strength that you need for everything else okay so and then you know it's just a matter of like just go to failure okay like you don't have to like you don't have to like set a timer you could set a timer and say i'm gonna beat this time but you don't need to be that exact with it uh, maybe in the beginning if you want to like make sure you're doing 10 seconds or 20 seconds it's a good idea but eventually once you start getting used to it just do like three sets to failure okay like that, that's the way to do it and do it toward the end of your workout or on a completely different day so that it doesn't interfere with the grip strength required for that okay so hey all uh arimantas says all kettlebells are sold out everywhere great am i into any kettlebell training no i'm not unfortunately or fortunately i don't know i'm just never into it I mean, it's not my thing <laughs> i know a lot of things are sold out pull-up bars are sold out but rings are not sold out guys wooden rings go get wooden rings <laughs> a pair of wooden gymnastics rings on amazon all right so uh, those are you know uh, ben says uh, thanks so much for your videos it makes a huge difference for me so a huge thanks huge you're welcome <laughs> all right all right let's see what else oh we're about an hour in okay another question what do you think about creatine in calisthenics i'm taking it right now i don't know if it's working or not creatine is going to work whether you're doing calisthenics or weightlifting or other training it does help um and you've noticed that you're heavier from the water weight and so your pull-ups suck yeah that, that can happen i notice like if i'm just a few pounds heavier i notice i notice it too or lighter i notice it as well um but it's not that's temporary don't let that psych you out that you know it's not something you can you can't overcome but you'll notice when you start taking creatine you'll notice a little boost i don't take it but like i used to like 15 years ago and then when you stop taking it you'll notice like you don't have that like extra edge like there's a little bit of an edge but it's not a big deal okay so it's really up to you you'll not you'll see you'll see how it goes <laughs> how's life been treating you anything you're stoked for at the moment uh and a lot of things are put on hold and you know i'm not stoked for anything other than i keep training for the front lever all the time and i'm about 13 i'm exactly 13 months and three days into front lever training and I, my my goal is just to hold the full front lever like this is all i care about like in terms of a strength move because it's so hard i know if i get this it's awesome so so i'm doing the front lever training and you know life is weird honestly we live in like this weird dystopian like very dystopian like phase in our life all of i don't know where you live but in all of california where i live we've been on lockdown so you know the streets are empty i'm in la where normally we have a crazy rush hour and there's like no traffic like 8 a.m 9 a.m no traffic no smog beautiful weather there's not too many people out it's just some people walking here and there and yeah i find it i find it interesting it's a good time i think to just meditate a little bit and just i find myself using my phone more and that's not necessarily a good thing so i've been trying to just do nothing a little bit more as well let's kind of balance it out um 
Okay, so I have a, little, uh, a bit more questions. <sighs> so, what's a good way to progress weighted pull-ups? All right, so weighted pull-ups in general, I would say only add like five pounds at a time. Okay, make sure you're doing three sets of five pull-ups, and then you add like just a couple pounds, or you, like let's say let's say five pounds okay and then your pull-up numbers go down a little bit maybe you can only do three sets of three or three sets of four and then you build it up to three sets of five or three sets of six okay something like that it's a very narrow range that you're working with and you're adding the pounds very slowly during that time so just that's like the general recommendation without getting any more complicated than that so that's what I would say. Do I have any recommendations for resources outside of myself? Where do you go to learn? So honestly, a lot of the things that I've been learning, like, or like, so weird, like, where's that book? <laughs> uh, the Overcoming Gravity book is really good as a reference manual. So I have a... Here we go. I have it here somewhere. So the Overcoming Gravity book is right here. So this book is really like the Bible of bodyweight training. I don't reference it too much these days, but back in the day, like, you know, if I wanted to like verify something or look into something, this was cool, like as a book, if you need a book looking for a book I could put the link to it in the chat as well so um, and then where do I go to learn honestly I have like a lot of friends in, at Muscle Beach who I can contact if I'm having a particular issue with something and you know they're great coaches themselves oftentimes and so I have like the luxury of going to them if you don't uh, you know this book is a good reference manual and then the on reddit the where is it the bodyweight fitness subreddit is also a very good um, resource you can use their search search up there and then like see you know search your issue and then see if you've had that someone else had that issue and there's an answer in there so you know those are like good resources just easily accessible so um next what's your protocol for alleviating sciatica um not my forte Although I do know that like the figure four stretch is a good one, kind of like this one basically. This is a this is a good stretch. It looks like this, and you know this is like a good thing to do before pigeon pose. And so pigeon pose is another good one. So like pigeon pose looks like this, you know, I don't know if you've played with it, but it's basically a really strong glute stretch. And then there's also something you could do, they're called um, nerve glides. Nerve glide. So if you just search sciatica nerve glide, you're going to get like videos on how to like floss your nerves this is something i would do as well if you have sciatica issues like nerve pain pain issues in particular it's just something like you don't have to do it all the time but like something to do it might be something that's missing in what you've been doing already so those are some things that come in mind although the real responsible answer would be like please see a physiotherapist if you haven't already so yeah um, 
Am I isolated at home right now? Yes, yes I am. That's right. <laughs> I'm just isolated here with with myself. <laughs> okay. So, um, what do you think about the happenings in the crypto market? I mean, crypto market and the stock market, they're like they're like this right now everyone's losing their mind and panicking and selling and the volatility of the markets are insane the volatility the price action is a reflection of human emotions so whenever you see selling 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 it's just people panicking 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 and like you see that happening worldwide like there's a lot of tension in the air a lot of tension in the city at homes and so um now you're seeing that reflected in the stock markets or in the crypto markets as well so yeah, it's interesting all right so what else hmm. tristan says uh everywhere is shut down uh, but he lives in the mountains and even there it's weird and not as relaxing as usual. Interesting. Huh. How do you cope with the urge to check your phone all the time at the moment? Hmm. I know that's a tough one. I, I mean, I just noticed that like yesterday that I'm like, you know what? Like, why am I using my phone more just because I'm in quarantine? It doesn't make sense. Like, cause not that much has changed. So a lot of this is, I think is in our head that you know there's a lot of things that we could do still that you know and some people treat it as a vacation you know so don't just like i don't know what to say it's really hard to like dis disconnect yourself from the phone just like literally like you can put your phone on i don't know if you have an iphone but you can like go to the control panel and then like click the do not disturb like that sleepy icon and then if you do that then basically you're not going to get any notifications so like if you just turn off the notifications it gives you less reasons to look at your phones uh, you know so that's like one little trick that can help a lot and then just like don't keep the phone on you like Put it in another room on purpose. <laughs> so that helps too. Okay. So whenever I do, we have a DJ Giga asking, whenever I do Elsa's off the floor, it gives me elbow tendonitis. Can you give any tips as far as hand placement on how to avoid that? My elbow pops when I do it. Um, that is, that's a tough I wouldn't know exactly why that's happening. If you have elbow hyperextension, meaning like your elbow straightens far more than usual, and that's why you're getting this issue. So if you have elbow hyperextension and you're doing an L-sit and it's causing pain on the inside there, you might need to strengthen your biceps. So like the, the biceps... This, these are, this is the biceps, right? The tendon of the biceps are what help protect the elbow. And when you're in a straight position, um, and if the bicep is weak, that means the tendon is weak. You know, like they go together, they, they're connected. So strengthening the biceps can help as well. But this is like not, that's not like, that might not be what's going on with you at all. So you need to go to a physiotherapist. They should see what kind of tendonitis you have specifically and what to do about that, okay? So um, Alex says I should stream on Twitch. I don't know. I mean, I'm streaming here right now, so what's the difference? <laughs> um, I don't have any followers on Twitch, so whatever. All right, hello, Antronic. The only other one, the only other thing I could stream is like Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do so now. 
Um, but again, YouTube has my biggest following, so I'm like trying to like just focus on whatever makes sense. All right, so um, Joaquin's asking, I want to train body weight again after a long time. I don't know whether to use your ring routine or the recommended Reddit routine. So that's a good question. The recommended Reddit, if, if you have a pair of rings and you like to train with the rings, definitely go with the rings routine. Like also, so I have to also say, if you like training with the rings and you wanna learn a bunch of skills, on the rings and on the floor the rings routine my rings routine is really perfect for that and you could get there by just going to my training programs and then my rings routine and and because there's the a lot more skills and you know a lot a lot of more you're gonna learn a lot more things with the rings routine but the reddit the reddit recommended routine is really good for as a basic strength training uh, you can use rings in that as well but for it doesn't have as much skills in there at all and it doesn't like prepare you in the same manner but it's free and effective and it works as well so you know maybe you do the free one first and then if you want to move on to something else or if you want to get more serious with the rings then you go to my rings routine okay so yeah Keith says it helps to get busy on a project absolutely man that's the best way that's really the best way to like get off your phone get off like distractions it's just like focus on what is your life's mission what is your purpose in life what is the thing that you're on this earth to do right now? And like, whatever's a, a roadblock, whatever's like in your way, it's just temporary and you're gonna get through it, okay? Don't let these stupid distractions with the phones and everything else and the news like really distract you from your life's mission and the person that you want to be, okay? So let's go to here. Panda says, I'm so annoyed at the people who won't stay at home and listen to the government. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, right? Like, we rely on, this is one of those scenarios where we rely, our safety relies on the common sense of the masses. And that's not very comforting because a lot of people don't have common sense. <laughs> so that's that's really a tough one for sure but don't, but don't don't get pissed about this you know this is not something that's not something in your control okay just do your part and that's it like what else can you do you know do i have any tips for combating uh, bowed legs and flat feet i like to jar jog but i'm scared of using up my cartilage um Let's see. Bowed legs. No, no, I have no tips for bowed legs, but flat feet. The only thing I would recommend is if you wear shoes all the time, is to just be more, you know, be barefooted. How do I say it? Be barefooted more often, okay? I don't mean you have to start running with bare feet or anything. Don't like go extreme on it. But in general, oh, I have a really good suggestion as well. Kit Laughlin has a good. Yeah, is it? Where is it? Let me switch the browser. Kit Laughlin over pronation? Or just pronation? Oh, here we go. Anti pronation exercise. Here we go. I'm gonna post this to Lesorex. This this anti-pronation exercise is what you should be doing to help with your to help restore the arches in your feet. 
So other than like, you know, not wearing shoes all the time, like there's people that wear like sandals and shoes in their house. Like, like no wonder you have flat feet, right? Like, but basically this exercise, it's kind of like a, you know, like a calf stretch. However, it has the emphasis on restoring your arches. So you're purposely like flattening out and then purposely like pushing really hard to like restore the arch. So that might be something that might be something of, that helps you that you can add. So, um, but yeah, best workout tips. Keep going on. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Stoicism. That's right. Stoicism is pretty cool. That's that's what's up. Um, I know you say you have to force discipline. It's crazy because my habits have been so have been bad for so long that my mind psychs me out into inaction. Hmm. I mean, maybe you should see a therapist. You know, I don't know if you go to school. Most schools and universities have free therapists, free counselors, just available. And if you do, or maybe even if it, you, you know you don't have access to free therapy, like it's worth it to find one and just go and, you know, maybe go to like a cognitive behavior therapist to help rewire you. Look up like, uh, yeah, cognitive behavior therapist to help you, you know, set you back on the right path. If you're constantly sabotaging yourself, you know, subconsciously or even consciously, like you got to you know just, just rewire yourself and you maybe you need some help like to recondition your mind that way what do you think about movement movement evolve move play and Edo portal i mean what is your training and life philosophy this is like a loaded question honestly just do whatever like I'm, I'm pretty simple like do whatever makes you happy okay like if you like training a certain way uh, doing a certain move you like to dabble in a variety of moves or you want to specialize in one thing for a year and then dabble in other things like just do whatever makes you keeps you consistent and happy okay in regards to training especially because you know we kind of have to like force ourselves to train like before like a hundred years ago you didn't have to like work out you didn't have to go to the gym life was already full of physical labor like everyone was like just to do the laundry and the dishes and whatever was a lot of physical work and that's just like stuff around the house if you had to go to work it was probably like a laborious job so like it's only nowadays where we have the freedom where we get to choose what we want to like do with our bodies and how we express ourselves so just like pick whatever you enjoy i don't i don't you know i don't need to complicate it like we do need movement that's for sure we do we are missing um we are missing that part of our lives like it's very easy to just be on the computer and then like not move your body at all that's very easy and that's definitely not the the right direction to go either you got to find the balance in between uh anna zapta says how's it going with your nutrition diet with keto and intermittent fasting are they changed during these years so i'm not doing so i'm generally i'm always doing an intermittent fasting uh generally don't eat in the morning until late morning or early lunch and then um so it's kind of like 16 8 16 hours not eating eight hours eating in general that's like what i'm doing but i'm not like adhering to the ketogenic diet although i said like at the beginning of this video how I talked a little bit about it, but how I'm generally always trying to stay 
lower carb than usual because doing the ketogenic diet like helped me understand so much uh, so much more about like like how much sugar I was eating and so I, I still avoid like breads and rice and pasta in general and try to make conscious choices with uh, you know vegetables and animal products uh, as opposed to like candy and breads and whatever else so yeah um, I've been talking for a while right now so I'm probably gonna end this soon what's the best exercise for lower traps it's a good question um, in regards to so my forte is not on isolation exercises like that especially not the lower traps like you know uh, the l-sit was the first thing that came to mind the l-sit uses the traps the lower traps in particular however i don't have any recommendations for lower traps and i wonder why you would want to do that <laughs> you know like i guess if it's for bodybuilding purposes but i'm not like into bodybuilding the body in isolation like that so yeah sorry can't ask uh, can't answer that one very well <laughs> hi Antronic. i just started some doing some handstand pre-work belly to wall 30 seconds nice pike handstand two days later i'm still sore should i take one more day off feels like i'm already missing a goal okay so you can totally work out again you might your performance might be suffering a little bit because you know like i don't know like you're sore it's causing pain so like you, you might not be performing as well however i find that working through the soreness helps dissipate the soreness faster than doing nothing so i do recommend doing a little bit of something maybe don't go so extreme <laughs> and you know maybe do half of what you normally would do and then you'll find that like you know that helps with like recovery a little bit you don't have as much to recover from and then like the soreness might dissipate so that's it you know like um did i answer your question yeah oh and you said you feel like you're already missing the goal listen do not feel that like a lot of people have like this insecurity that they're not doing enough like if they take a few days off or a week off like you're not gonna lose your gains okay like don't freak out about that and not only do the people training have this insecurity but like the trainers themselves so like let's like me as a coach let's say i have a client and i want to make them work out it's like something in me wants to make sure that they're working out enough and i'll make them work out to their limits which you know i'm very conscious of this so i'm trying not to do that but i know that there's a lot of trainers that will purposely make them make their clients you know work them to the bone until they're like so exhausted and the clients that's what they want as well because they think they need to experience that to have progress but it's not exactly true right? and, it, and it, if you take a few days off you're not losing anything you're actually getting stronger because you're getting stronger when you're resting and recovering when you're working out you're actually getting weaker because you're breaking everything down and you're only getting stronger from the super compensation cycle after during the recovery where your body is actually getting stronger during rest days so don't feel like you're losing anything uh, don't let that drive you in to the extreme um, i know we all experience that but just stay confident that you're not losing anything okay just stay consistent that's all all right i only have rings for dips and on lockdown oh sounds good should i progress with the support hold uh for three by 60 seconds and then the rto support hold and then negatives so you don't need to do three sets of 60 seconds 
if you could do the support hold for 30 to 60 seconds in one set I think you're good enough to start doing negatives for the dips so yeah and you could also do rows on the rings on your rings which is a really good exercise and if you feel like the rows are too easy do rows with one arm at a time way harder <laughs> so yeah so that's for jack shannon i hope i answered you well um, florian says it feels harder to build a habit when you need two to three days of rest in the beginning yeah that's true but it's very short-lived you know you're gonna recover very fast and you know it's fine to work out every two or three days anyway that's okay can you say hi to your dog for me absolutely yes she just sleeps all day man she just sleeps all day she's way older now my dog is has aged a lot in the past year and it's really sad um but yeah Keith says, uh, thanks a bunch for doing this. Generally made my day better. You're welcome. That's very nice. Very nice to hear. Um, so Michelle's asking, uh, I think it's Michelle. Is it Michelle or Michael? I don't know. Sorry. Uh, a quick question regarding your rings routine. In the skill work section, I like to do the skin the cat, but I can't find a suggested reps and sets. So in regards to the skill work in general, the whole section I try not to like be very strict with the sets and reps there because I want you to go with quality and your feel about it okay because you don't need to do a ton of you you don't need to like work yourself to the failure you're just going to use the strength training portion for that you're going to use the skill work to just get a little better at that when you feel like you had a little breakthrough or you reinforced enough of the you know exercise you reinforced it well then you can move on all right so jk is asking what are your favorite lower body posterior chain exercises i'm very quad dominant from cycling and i'm wondering how to tackle this imbalance so in general i really like the the glute bridges with one leg up so because i a regular glute bridge is easy but the glute bridge with one leg up in the air is pretty good i would say it's really good and then other than that the nordic curls or natural leg curls are awesome okay and that if you have a way to do those at home they're great like really really hardcore for the posterior chain other than that, the uh, last thing comes to mind are the reverse hyperextensions, which you could do on a bench, on a couch, like somewhere you have to like lay on. So reverse hyperextensions is the last one. Uh, all right, uh, one more question. Is rings all you really need for a good bodyweight routine? For the, uh, I would say, yeah, like absolutely rings are all you need so like rings in general will keep your upper body challenged for your entire life there are there, there's no move on there like you're always going to have things to conquer on the rings in regards to the upper body okay so yeah um in regards to the lower body you might need, I mean, it depends what your goals are, but like I train my lower body with bicycling, for example, uh, for the most part. So I don't need to do like weighted work. I don't care to get my legs huge, for example, you know? So if you did though, if you wanted to like get your legs really strong, you know, and you've gone beyond pistol squats and, you know, shrimp squats, then you can start adding some weight to those exercises and benefit from that as well. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, any uh, good... I'm oh, sorry. Let me read this. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, so Rishi is saying, what are your goals at the moment and what are you training towards? So I, like I said before, I said it earlier that I've been working on the front lever. Uh, if you know what the front lever is, I mean, I, you know, it's funny. Most people don't know what the front lever is. Front lever looks like this. Okay, this move right here. This beautiful move. This is this is my goal. I mean, I've been working on it for 13 months straight right now, and every time I feel like I'm two months away, just like just like really close to it. But it's taken it's taken a while, and it's gonna take maybe two more months. <laughs> I really don't know when I'm gonna actually have a full front lever hold, but I'm close, and I'm getting closer, and so I'm not gonna stop. All right. Uh, does counting calories work for losing weight? RK is asking. Absolutely it works. It's like the number one thing to do. Like that's the the way to do it. Like I just made like a video on that as well. Here, if you scroll down to my latest YouTube videos, go to guaranteed weight loss and, you know, You'll just watch this video and then you'll see a lot. Let's do this. I'll share that video. Bam. So like the guaranteed way to fat loss. The ben and then I share with you the benefits of counting calories. Um, and then like the drawbacks and all. And then I give a bunch of tips. You know like how to make this concept easier all that stuff so yeah like definitely count your calories if you want to lose weight it's like the most straightforward so like it's the hardest thing the hardest thing about it is the discipline of like doing it like logging it but i think you could do it like you should do it all right um how can i transition from a tuck l sit to a full l sit um, I watched your video and my max is 15 seconds tuck, but I struggle in improving beyond that. Honestly, just like, just 15 seconds is pretty good. You can maybe extend it longer, but I would say just like tuck less, slightly less. And you can try tuck, uh, so like both feet are tucked. You can try one leg straight and then you know one leg tucked like you can try that variation so that is something you can do as well um another variation let's see let me think what is another variation i had something in my mind like so we went over the tuck to do a slightly less tucked do one leg tucked one leg straight um some something just skipped my mind. It's okay, it'll come back to me. <laughs> but but basically, like if you're already at a 15 second tuck, you're you're well on the way, man. You know, like there's one. I don't know if you've seen. Uh, just search active hike compression. Active how to improve active pike compression with me. So if you need help with the L sit or the V sit, like you basically want to do these seated leg lifts, which is kind of like this. Basically my butt's on the floor, my hands are by my knees and I'm lifting my feet. And you could do that statically, dynamically, you know, this exercise will always help your L sit or help you get the v sit even so you know that's something to keep in mind like you can add that in there so yeah um thanks for this i felt like you were actually talking to me and thanks for trying even though the questions weren't exactly detailed or easy to answer you're welcome and i don't know how to say your name i wish i knew sigve pronunciation <laughs> it's Norwegian I, I suppose Sigve pronunciation Sigve 
Sigva. Cool. That's a very cool name. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to cut it there. Yep, you're from Norway. Awesome. So I caught up to the chat. I caught up to the scroll. And, and yeah, um, I think we're good, guys. I'm going to close these things. We went over a bunch of things. Handstands, guys. Remember, you can work on handstands. You can work on handstands at home. You need no equipment. Maybe just a wall. Usually a wall. And yeah, like it's awesome. Uh, that's something you can do at home. But last but not least, remember, you can go to ontronic.org slash home dash workout. And then you see all all my resources that you can do at home but it doesn't require anything else so thanks for watching guys we had a good amount of activity and i hope that was beneficial for everyone and uh, yeah talk to you guys later i gotta get some i gotta sit so i've been standing this whole time i have a standing desk which is awesome. So I'm not like seated the whole time, but now I'm like, I'm like tired. <laughs> well, you're welcome, Rishi. And what do you think about sourdough bread? I don't know. I like sourdough bread. What else am I going to think about it? Like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So I'll see you guys later. And I'll, yeah, I'll probably do this again soon. So, talk to you later. Bye.